Falcons. I'm Dylan. And I'm Trinity. This is our November broadcast. Specifically, Turkey Day. Why do you get so excited for Thanksgiving? A holiday about food. It's a dream. Speaking of food, let's go to Rika and Ryan for their turkey cupcakes. Hey Falcons, I'm Ryan. And I'm Rika. Today we're going to be teaching you how to decorate these delicious turkey cupcakes. Here are the ingredients you'll need. A Ferrero Rocher, frosting, and a mini Hershey's bar. So, take the frosting and put down a layer on top of the cupcake and put your Ferrero Rocher on that. And then stick your eyes on and put the Hershey's bar lined up behind the Ferrero Rocher. Have, Have a, a happy, happy Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving Falcons. Falcons! Gobble, gobble, hey! Man, you're right. Those turkeys look delicious. Not to mention how cute they are. Now to Bryce and Justin for their paper turkeys. Don't you mean origami? Oh, my bad. <sighs> Today, we're going to teach you how to make an origami turkey. First step, crease your paper like a triangle. Second step, fold it over. And then fold it the other way. Third step. When you creased it really good, you cut it with your hands. It should look like a square. Once you're finished with that step, fold it hot dog style. When you're done with that, the crease that you did for the hot dog style, you fold it again on the crease. Do it for both sides. And it should look like this. Once you're finished with that, fold it like a paper airplane. And then fold both like a paper airplane again. done with that, you're going to fold it all the way down until it touches the end of the paper, the bottom of the paper. When you're finished with that, fold it right here, like that. And then keep folding on the same line. Once you're finished with that, then you take the nose and you fold it over again. Now you take the very end and fold it like that. And then you fold it in half. And you take the tail and flip it up. Then you get your tape and you tape the feathers just like this. And keep folding the tail in different ways until it stands up straight. When you're done with your turkey, it'll look like this. You can do it with regular paper, notebook paper also. If you can't get it to stand up straight, take a piece of tape and fold it into a circle. And then put it on the table. That turkey. Gobble, 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 <laughs> gobble, gobble. gobble. Hey Falcons, I'm Gracie. With me today I have Isai. Today we'll show you how you can make an awesome puppy. Yeah, let's show you. Let's start with the materials. One sock, buttons, yarn, eyes, and hot glue. 
So today, we'll start by gluing the sock perfect to fit your arm. After that, you can get the hot glue gun and glue two eyes on the top of the sock. Then you can pick up any color buns and glue them down this part of your arm. Next, cut tiny pieces of any color yarn and glue them on. Last but not least... Hold up! Wait a minute! Y'all are going too fast! Last but not least, okay. you slip the sock puppet on your hand. You're done! Thanks for watching our puppet show! See you next time! <laughs> that was pretty good. Yeah, it was exciting. And exhausting. I bet. Wait, random thought. What started Thanksgiving? How about I just have Landon McKinley tell you? Thanksgiving is about a lot more than giving thanks. True statement. According to History.com, it all started in 1620 on the Mayflower, with 102 pilgrims on their way to Plymouth Rock. When the pilgrims got to Plymouth, they came across the Wapadonk Indians. They decided to share an autumn holiday in 1621. They acknowledged this day to be Thanksgiving, two centuries of celebration from individual colonies and states to celebrate, but it was never an official holiday. During the Civil War in 1863, Abraham Lincoln made Thanksgiving a national holiday. Now, still to this day, we celebrate giving thanks every year on Thursday, November 28th. Many people have Thanksgiving traditions, including eating turkey, ham, castles, and many different desserts. My favorite thing to eat on Thanksgiving is my mom's chocolate layer pie. What about you, Landon? I'd have to say apple pie. <laughs> Sounds great. You know, everyone has something to be thankful for, so what, what are, are you thankful, thankful for? for? Hey guys, it's Haley and Kenna, and today on SNN News, we bring you a segment all about our 8th grade volleyball coach, Coach Bell. All great coaches are inspiring. You may be wondering about Coach Bell. Not only is she inspiring, but we recently had the opportunity to speak with her about her inspirations and life as a coach. Coach Bell started playing Little League at the age of 11. Her love for sports just continued to grow over the years. Coach Bell didn't just play volleyball, but also softball. Her passion for sports carried into college. She attended Lee College on a full athletic scholarship to play volleyball. She played all around and was a strong outside hitter. Her sophomore year, she was recruited to the University of Mary Hardin Baylor and received a full athletic scholarship to play volleyball and softball. She unfortunately needed surgery on her right shoulder, so she never played for UMHB due to rehabilitating her injury. When she recovered, she received a call from the head softball coach at Houston Baptist University. They were in need of a player because their third baseman was graduating. She accepted the offer and she was on her way to HBU on a full paid scholarship to play volleyball and softball. While playing at HBU, she received many honors. She was named All-Region and All-Conference in volleyball. She also received All-Region in softball, Academic All-Region, and was named All-American by NFCA. Wow, she received so many awards in her academic career. This all led to her coaching today, and HMS is so lucky to have such an amazing coach. Coach Bell inspires me because she didn't start doing sports until the age of 11, but she worked hard and was really good. Yeah, Coach Bell is definitely an inspiring coach. She always makes me do my best and makes me a better player every day. Thank, Thank you, you Coach, coach Bell, Bell, for being such an inspiring coach. Hey, it's Isaiah here with the special guest, Coach Walker. Thank you, Coach Walker, for joining us. I'd like to ask you some questions about HMS athletics. Is it beneficial to go to fat camp during the summer and why? It's definitely beneficial to go to fat camp during the summer because it gets the uh, athletes prepared for uh, junior high athletics and what to expect in the weight room and things like that. How does fat camp prepare students for athletics? Uh, it prepares them because they can get to know the coaches, they can get to know what to do in the weight room, how to act in the weight room, uh, what their strengths and weaknesses might be, and things like that. Yeah. How do you feel about coaching, like being a gym coach this year? Uh, I'm coaching sixth grade PD this year. It's really fun to be around the sixth graders because they have a lot of energy and they're always excited to be there. How does gym give students a foundation for what to expect as they sign up for athletics? Uh, we do a warm up each day to where they start by jogging for seven minutes and they do 10 push ups, 25 sit ups, 15 squats, and 10 lunges. Uh, and I tell them that we do that a lot in athletics. And, just gives them a sense of what to expect when they get there, and I tell them that on the first day. So to be, to be prepared? Yeah, I like to be prepared. Thank you for joining us at Falcon News Network. No problem. That's some really cool information. Yeah, coaches are pretty cool. 
Well, thanks for watching, Falcons. Eat a lot of food and enjoy your day.